I changed my scripture reading. I know you're going to be upset. I changed my scripture reading, not Ephesians 6, but Hebrews chapter 11. I'm going to read just some verses from the chapter. I'm not going to read the whole chapter, but just some verses from the chapter. It says, now faith is confidence in what we hope, faith is confidence in what we hope for. It is assurance of what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. In verse 6 it says, And without faith it is impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to Him must believe that He exists and that He rewards those who earnestly seek Him. And then verse 13 says, All these people were still living by faith when they died, yet they did not receive the things promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance, admitting they were foreigners and strangers on earth, People say such things show that they are looking for a country of their own. If they had been thinking of the country they left, they would have had opportunity to return. Instead, they were looking for a better country, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. So my sermon this morning is called The Shield of Faith. I preached last week about the belt of truth about the armor of God. Today I want to talk about the shield of faith. Um, last Sunday's sermon, it's kind of funny, last Sunday's sermon, Saturday afternoon, about 3 o'clock, I almost scrapped it. I almost just pitched it. And it's kind of funny, the sermons I don't think are going to be very good, those are the ones you really like. And the ones I think are really good, I don't think you like. So I don't know, <laughs> I don't know where I'm at. Um... <laughs> I read this cute little story, cute little deal. A pastor had a little girl, his daughter, and, and, and he was writing a sermon, and the little girl said, Dad, how do you know what to say in your sermons? And the, her father said, God tells me. And she looked at him and said, well, if that's true, how come you, how come you have so many things crossed out? <laughs> and it's so true because you got that. Look at this page. That, look at this page. I, you know, this whole, you're not even going to hear this whole part here. So I thought, of my, I thought of myself when I read that little story. So I want to start by asking you this question. How strong is your faith? How strong is your faith? Let me ask you this. Is your faith, if you were to compare your faith, is it like an oak? Strong and sturdy? Or is it more like a willow where it's kind of... Is your faith more like one of those blow-up things they have at the car dealers that's just kind of, you know? <laughs> you're going to think of that next time you go buy one of those, aren't you? You're going to say, you're going to say to yourself, I hope that's not what my faith is like. Kind of up and down, all over the place. Here's the thing, we all have faith. Every one of us has faith. All of us have a level of faith. It, it, simple terms, faith. It's believing it's, it's being sure of what we hope for. It is the evidence of things we do not see. In the simplest terms, it is believing even though you can't see it yet. It is, faith is believing even though you cannot see it. Okay? It's not seen. You can't see it yet. I have faith that tomorrow I'm going to barbecue. Can't see it yet. Can't smell it yet. Can't feel it yet can't taste it yet. It's going to happen. I have faith. I have faith that Rob and Karen are going to buy me a corn dog tonight at the homecoming. No. <laughs> I, I promised to take them to Chick-fil-A today for lunch and I told them anything they want. <laughs> yeah, they're closed. <laughs> okay. That Let's talk about faith. You ready? Want to talk about faith for a couple minutes? Okay, he says the shield of faith. I, I love this. I, I found this very interesting. I don't know if any of you will find it very interesting, but I found it very interesting. When I studied the shield of faith, they said the shield that Paul was talking about more than likely was the sh shield that the Romans would use. And it was interesting because the shield the Romans used was not the little circle shield like Captain America. 
It was not the circle shield. It was actually a shield that was as tall as a door. It was as tall as the soldier was. And it was kind of a rectangle and kind of bent a little bit. And that was, that was the Roman shield. It was a, it, in other words, it covered your entire body. All of you was protected by the shield. And what the soldiers would do is when they were being attacked, and, and maybe they were being outnumbered, they'd take those shields and they'd lock them together. They'd get in a circle and they'd lock them together. And then they became impenetrable. They became like a little mini fortress. And no arrows or no spears or anything could get in. And they called it in the day, see if I, I, I struggle with foreign words, tes, testudo. It was called a testudo, which we get our modern word for tortoise. So they would, they would lock their shields and nothing could get in. And here's the thought I had. That's why church is so important. It's because when we come here, when we come here and we're together, it's like we're locking our shields together and nothing can get in. That's why church is so important. And that's why I feel bad for people who don't go to church. It's because they're out there and they're vulnerable. They might have the shield, and they've, but they might have the shield and they're kind of going like this. But here's the thing, when you're all by yourself and you're all alone, guess what can happen? You can get attacked from behind or you can get attacked from the sides. But when we're together, that is when we're at our strongest. It's when we are together. Together we are strong. Together we are at our strongest. So let me take a minute now. Let's just talk about faith, okay? Do we, do we all agree? Is there anyone here who has no faith at all? I mean, you've got faith, right? You have some, everybody in the world has some level of faith. The question that I want to ask is, do we have faith in God? We all have faith, but do we have faith in God? And here's the thought I had when I was writing this. Here's one, here's one of the thoughts I had. Is that... Is my faith in God as strong as the faith I have in other things or in other people? That was my question to myself. Is my faith in God as strong as the faith that I have in other things or in other people? In other words, how does my faith compare to in God as with other things. How does my faith com compare? And, and here's, here's, here's something I want to be honest with you about myself that I have great faith in, and I'm questioning it, is that I have great faith that if it's going to be one of those days where everything's going to go wrong, everything's going to go wrong. Do you have that kind of faith? Or... or, or Howard and I, we, we both struggle with this. Howard and I have great faith that if it can go wrong, it will. <laughs> I'm thinking, I, I kind of have faith in that. Like, like, for instance, I know I have faith, and I know if I'm in a hurry and i got to get somewhere, I'm going to be in front of somebody who's driving 25 miles an hour. I know it. Last night, Laura and I were coming home from Carlisle. We get behind a motorcycle. He's drunk. He's going 40 miles an hour. He's weaving all over the road. Can't get away from him. Finally, we get to Breeze, and you know somebody had to have a root beer float, so that was okay. So, because <laughs> I don't eat those things, you know me. And so we lose this guy, and Laura's like, "Well, at least we can lose this guy." We get back on the highway. Here comes another one. If I'm tired, if I'm in a hurry. I have faith that I'm going to get behind somebody going slow. I have faith that if I leave anything out, the dog's going to eat it. He ate, you know, it, if he eats a bill, do you have to pay it? <laughs> or is that kind of like the old homework deal? My dog ate the homework. If he eats the Amron bill, do we have to pay it? I have faith that that when we go into a restaurant and, and, it, and we're not getting any attention or anything, another family will walk in, they will, get their, they will get their order in and get their food, and we won't even be waited on yet. I have faith in that. I, 
I have faith that when I'm on 270 and there's traffic jam, whatever lane I'm in is the wrong lane. In other words, I'm afraid that I have faith in the wrong things. I have great faith in negative things. I never thought of that. I need therapy. <laughs> it hit me. I have faith. I think I have great faith in negative things. But do I have that same faith in God? Do I have the same faith in negative things that I have, that I have in God? Do I have faith in God that God can do things that I am not capable of, that God will move and change things, that God will put things into place? Jesus said, with God, all things are possible. And here's what I love about God, is that God will do things even though my faith doesn't measure up. I'm so glad he does that. God will do things even though my faith isn't very good or my faith isn't very active, he'll do things, <laughs> he'll do things anyway. Uh, there was a friend of mine, I haven't seen her for a while, and I thought, you know, I need to check on her. So I put on my little reminder, boy, I live by that now, the phone, the reminders. So I put, and, and it's not the Karens, it's a different Karen. I put, check on Karen on my reminders. And so... A few days went by, and I thought, well, you know, i got to check on her. i got to check on her. Well, I'm over in, I made a hospital call, and I'm over in South County. And uh, it was late in the day, so I thought I'll get one. Because I, 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 I love that fresh time. I shop with the yuppies over there at fresh time. I like their, I like their rotisserie chickens. So I had faith that I was going to walk in there, and they'd all be gone. Well, so, I, and they actually had one. And so I'm sitting in my car, and this car pulls right next to me, and I thought, eh, you know what, I hate to pull out, and then they open their door, and I hit their door. Do you ever do that? I'm a, I, I don't want to hit their door, so I thought I'd just sit here until they get out, and, go, and, and, then I'll, and then I'll back out. So I'm, I'm texting my daughter, I'm checking the email, the car door opens, it's Karen, oh. right next to me. She looks at me, and she goes, Matt? <laughs> You shop here? <laughs> well, of course I do. It's fresh time, you know. I'm organic. <laughs> Coincidence? 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 Or is God doing things even though my faith is not measuring up, even though I'm more worried about the rotisserie chickens being all sold out and I'm not going to get one? And yet God's moving, God's working, God's doing things, even with my lack of faith. Just think, here's the thought ahead, just think what God would do if I'd actually have the faith in him that I have in things going wrong. Just think what God would do in my life if I took the faith that I had in bad things and turned it and put it towards him. Just think the things that God would do. Now I'll close with this. Here's the... Here's the truth about faith. Here's the number one problem I have with faith. Can I tell you what it is? Here's where I struggle. I, I, I told Merle this and, and the folks this the other day at the, at the services on Thursday. Unrealistic expectations. Unrealistic expectations. Anybody else struggle with that? Unrealistic expectations in life. I always like to tell young people before I do their weddings, I always warn them, be careful of unrealistic expectations. Because you're supposed to be married a long time. You're supposed to go 70, 80 years. And one time I had this young couple, this is years ago, I had this young couple, I met with them for the wedding. I was telling them that. They're like, oh, Matt, we don't need that. They go, we don't need to hear that, Matt. We're, the bride said, we're never going to argue. We're never going to fight. <laughs> We're never going to have a disagreement. We're going to live blissfully and we're going to live on love. <laughs> Is that being a little unrealistic? Is that getting married with unrealistic expectations? If, if you've been married, if you've been married, have you ever been in an argument? No, Shelly said no. I believe that too. No. <laughs> Yeah. 
here's, here's the unrealistic expectations that I have, that I struggle with, is that God's not going to do everything for me. God's not going to remove every hurdle. God's not going to make every day perfect. I said this at, I said this at Cedarhurst. God is not going to make every day full of unicorns and rainbows. And then I gave him this. Then I gave him this. I'll give it to you this morning. I'll give this to you this morning. Before you get to the rainbow, you got to get through the rain. Isn't that good? You know who said that? The great theologian Dolly Parton. <laughs> Before you get to the rain, it's true. Before you get to the rainbow, you got to get through the rain. Oh, I love that. That was a good service, wasn't it? That was awesome. But anyway, he's not going to take everything away. Not every day is going to go perfect. I have these unrealistic expectations that because I have faith and every day should just be fine and every day should be rainbows and, and unicorns. And I don't even like unicorns. I don't know why I keep bringing them up. But, but then here's, here's what I gave them. I'm going, to give, I'm going to give this to you this morning. I'm not going to charge you for this. This is free. <laughs> God will not always give you what you want, but he will always give you what you need. He will not always give you what you want, but he'll always give you what you need. Here's the thought I had. When's the last time I truly went hungry? Hungry. I'm not talking about stopping at the gas station for a Twix bar. When's the last time I've ever gone hungry? I mean, where the, you go home, there is no food, and you have no idea where to find food. When's the last time I had to sleep outside because I had nowhere to go? When's the last time I slept somewhere and put newspapers over me because I had nowhere to stay? When's the last time I had nobody to talk to? When's the last time I truly felt lonely? When's the last time I truly felt like nobody cared and I, and, and I felt, when's the last time I felt unloved? When's the last time? Faith says, Matt, you're getting caught up with your wants while he's giving you what you need. This is the last little thing I'll tell you. I used to work on a farm when I was in college, and it was for an older lady. It's funny. She was, you know, that, isn't it funny how people are older when you're younger, and now they're not old anymore? <laughs> she was like 65. Oh, that, oh she's ancient, you know. <laughs> Anyway, and, and she owned this farm, and I always felt bad for her because she wore old clothes, and she wore old work boots, and I thought of this. She had, get this, she had and used, and I did, this is before my time, but a lot of you will remember this, the old washing machines where it had the big thing, and then they had the rollers, and you rolled your clothes through that, what in the world, and I, th I thought it was some type of a donut maker when I saw it. I had no idea it was a washing machine. She used that to the day she died. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I used to joke with people, I'd say, she loves eating fast food. Because I was out there chasing the chicken. <laughs> how, do, how do I say it in a nice way in church? Remove the head, <laughs> and she'd have a big pot of scalding water ready to go, and she'd drop that chicken in there and pluck the feathers out, and that was her fast food, because I, I literally had to chase that chicken throughout the chicken yard, but that thing had tough legs by the time I was done. Always felt bad for her, because I thought she never goes anywhere, she never does, you know, she never takes trips, she, she drives kind of an old truck and all that stuff, I always felt bad for her. When she died, when she died, she was worth over a million dollars in cash. She had over a million dollars in property. She was worth two million dollars. And people said to me, you know, Matt, isn't that ridiculous? She didn't do this and she didn't do that. And it took me 35 years to figure this out. She had everything she needed. Had what she needed. Not what I thought she wanted, but everything she needed. God doesn't always give you what you want, but he gives you 
what you need. That is faith. I hope you take the time to work on it like I do, and I need to. Let's pray. Father, we are grateful for the shield of faith. When we lock our shields together, nothing can get through. When we're together and we lock those shields and, we're, and we look like a tortoise, nothing can get through. We can even put a couple shields on top of us so nothing can even come over the top. When we're together, we're stronger. But when we're alone, when we're out there by ourselves, we're vulnerable. So, Father, we're grateful we can come to church and lock our shields together. We can grow in faith. And, Father, remind us that there are things that we have great faith in that are absolutely ridiculous. And we need to take that, we need to, we need to take that great faith and we need to turn it to you. And, wow, the wonders we will wait for to see what you will do in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.